Hello, this is Mark Chines, Senior Application Engineer with Silo Design Solutions. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a corridor cul-de-sac design using Autodesk Civil 3D 2022. I'll also show you a, a very brief uh, portion of it in Civil 3D 2021 to show you the difference in, in the corridor uh, region targeting uh, dialog box. There's been new changes made to Civil 3D 2022 for those of you who aren't aware. So I'll show you both ways so that you have some familiarity. Now in this video, uh, in this drawing here, I have an existing ground. It's just turned off in a no display style. I also have a civil 3D corridor and a cul-de-sac already created down here on the south side. So we're gonna create something similar to this for this region here up on the north. Right now, all I have in here is a standard AutoCAD polyline at zero elevation to define my geometry. This is gonna represent the edge of pavement. So I have a arc plus two Kirby turns at 25 feet. If you notice, also I have some tangent sections that extend into my corridor model already. This is so I can extend my alignment out and use the edge of pavement for my corridor model to project those into my profile view for this vertical alignment so I know where to tie in my existing points and my existing tangents, okay? So to begin, I'm gonna convert this polyline into an alignment. I'll come up here on my home tab, choose alignment, create alignment from objects and select that polyline and hit enter. Now I typically do all my Kirby turns and cul-de-sacs in a clockwise direction just for, uh, so I have limit the number of assemblies I need. So I'll go ahead and reverse this so it's going in a clockwise direction. And I'm gonna call this alignment cul-de-sac north I'm going to leave the alignment style as a generic layout with no labels. And I'm done. So now I have an alignment. The next thing I'm going to do is create my vertical alignment through here because I can't have that baseline as a horizontal load. I'll need a vertical component. So as a frame of reference, I'll create a surface profile. I'll select my alignment. In the contextual ribbon above, I'll choose the surface profile command. And there's my existing ground surface. I'll go ahead and create an existing ground profile. Now also to do my design profile, I'll check the draw in profile view button. I'm going to leave all these, the rest of it default and just create a profile view off here to the left side. And there's my existing ground profile for my, uh, 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 my cul-de-sac alignment. Now I want to be able to draw in a vertical profile here along my existing uh, uh, alignment, but I don't know where to tie in the existing ground points. And I can do that very easily by extracting feature lines from this corridor and projecting them in my profile. That's what these extensions are for. So to do that, I'm going to select my corridor. Up here in the contextual ribbon, I'm going to choose feature lines from corridor. I'm going to do just this region here, so I'll choose by regions, and then I'm going to choose this region here. Okay. Once that's done, I'll hit enter, and in the extract corridor feature lines dialog box, I don't need everything, so I'm going to choose the button at the top to deselect all, and also to collapse all of the expansions. And what I want is the edge of travel way, both for the left and right side. So I'm going to click those, and this is going to extract these feature lines for the edge of traveled way for my corridor region here. I'll hit escape and cancel that and you can see I have two auto corridor feature lines that's been extracted. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project those in my profile. So I'm going to come back here to my profile grid, choose my profile view and I'm going to choose project objects to profile view. In the plan view I will select those feature lines I just extracted hit enter, and then in the project objects to profile view, I could set a style if I wanted to. Um, I can choose any of these standard ones like uh, edge of traveled way and set those for both of those if I needed to. Honestly, this is just for design, so uh, I don't really need to and click OK. And there are my projections. So I have a little projection there and I have a little projection there. So this point here becomes the point I'm gonna have to match uh, my elevations and slopes. Now to make that done, I'm going to go ahead and select my 
profile view, and I'm going to choose the profile creation tools to do my design profile very easily. Okay, I'm just going to call this call to sac north FG ETW. So I know what that is. Edge of travel away, finish gray, and hit OK. And in my profile layout tools, I'm going to draw this by line. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start a line, and I'm going to choose endpoint to endpoint there, and endpoint to endpoint there, and then hit enter. That establishes two grades, one in and one out, that matches the grade of my corridor from those feature lines that are projected. Then under my line tool here, I'm going to say salt tangent intersection, and I can quickly select these two tangents here and it'll solve that intersection for that PI. And if I wanted to, at this point, I could add a vertical curve if that's necessary. Oops, try this again. Parabola, there we go, enter, enter, and I'll just give it maybe like a 50-foot a, a curve. So there's my 50-foot curve, and hit enter. So there is my alignment for my edge of pavement, going starting and going all the way around here including some tangents coming in and out. So now I know where I'm meeting. I'm matching here, and I'm matching here to those edge of pavement. I'm ready to finish up my corridor model at this time. So at this point, I will show you. I have a standard assembly I'm going to use. Um, I actually have one here. This is similar to a curvy turn assembly, except I'm just facing it in an opposite direction because of the way I'm going around clockwise. So this pavement's going to go towards the center. This is going to be along the outside edge, but it's just a pavement, something that I could target, plus my standard sidewalk, curb and gutter, and daylight. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my view. I have a saved view back to my cul-de-sac. So to add to my corridor, I'm going to select my corridor model. I'm going to say add baseline, and I'm going to choose my new baseline I just made. Plus... Once I do that, I have to choose a profile, so I'm going to choose my new profile that I just made in the previous step. Okay, I'm now going to come here under, and while still I have my corridor selected, under contextual ribbon, I'm going to say add regions, and I'm going to add regions. Now the add region command, if you're not used to it, once you have a baseline established, you hover your mouse to select the region you want to add it to. So I'm going to select that one, and I'm going to draw my cul-de-sac from there all the way around to there and to the end of the pavement. I got my object snap turned on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And then the assembly I want is cul-de-sac. Now, if I do nothing more, I can do my target mapping here as I would normally do, but if I do nothing more and hit OK, it's going to go ahead and create that portion of the cul-de-sac. At this time now, I'm going to play with some targeting here using the Civil 3D 22, 2022 uh, targeting so with my corridor selected, I'm going to choose Edit Targets, choose the new region I just made, and then, you know, and then this is the new dialog box for target mapping. If you haven't seen this before, it's divided into two tabs. There's offset and elevation on the left and surface on the right. So when I choose, here's all my assembly, sub-assemblies right here. The baselines they're tied to, the regions they're tied to, the side, the group, and the offsets. So I'm going to do this pavement line. That is the cul-de-sac lane is what I named it in my, uh, in my uh, assembly. So I need the width target. That is going to be a horizontal offset. So I'm going to choose instead of none here, I have to choose from below down here. So uh, when you're doing horizontal, the newest new target mapping, the offset targets are on the left, uh, alignments or pipes on the right are feature lines, polylines, and survey figures. Okay, uh, I know this is on my uh, the name of the, the 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 offset. If I don't know the name of the road I want to check, I'm going to select this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my targets into the center line. I want all my pavement lines to tie into the center line right here. So that's going to be my horizontal target. So you can see that has been checked, Madison Lane. Okay, but I also need to set the profile. Not only do I want to have it come in horizontally, but I also want it to match this alignment here and tie back there. So I also got to choose my offset elevation. Now that's a little bit different. The elevation targets now 
I, I, I don't have a chance before I could choose the alignment and then the profile. Now you just have a list of all the profiles in your drawing. So you're going to have to read your alignment from the left. So I'm going to find out here. There it is, Madison Lane, Madison Lane, FGCL. I don't have a chance to choose it, choose it the horizontal, but I can choose it. So if I didn't want to choose it here, I can come out, click this button, and come out to my profile. So I got to find my profile, and then there's my, I could choose the profile that way, and it would choose it. So there is Madison Lane. Um, but I'm just going to uncheck it, and I'm going to check it this way, just to double check here. So it's going to be Madison Lane FG. Oops. And uh, another thing would be nice here if it was able to sort, but uh, I want to make sure you choose. So I only want, ah, come on, turn them all off. Just that one. There we go. All right. And then hit apply and OK. Let me go back to my corridor. And so now you can see it's tied in. The loud thing I could do is check my surface outside. So I'm going to say, uh, choose my corridor again, edit my targets for this region. And now in this target mapping, I have to go to my surface tab and I have to select my existing surface. That's what I'm tying into. Hit OK. And then there's my tiebacks. The last thing now to do is to edit my frequency. And for a cul de sac, I'm going to set everything to about two feet, two feet, two feet. And there you have it. There's my cul de sac. So I have a cul de sac for the south and a cul de sac to the north. And if you wanted to check it, you know, you could do something here really quick and go to your object viewer and maybe just rotate it out and just zoom in. Make sure that things look good. Make sure that nothing looks horribly bad. Make sure all your alignments match and everything looks pretty good here. So I'm pretty satisfied with my cul-de-sac. Now I'm going to switch over here really quick to 2021 and uh, just show you that targeting in this particular model. Um, I'm going to pick it up from where I left off at uh, this point right here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, select my region, and then go into the edit targets again. Now this is going to be the, the old targeting method. So if you're still using 2021, you're going to come across this one. Uh, so it's all one thing. Here's width, target, and slope and elevation. So all my widths are here. So i got to read the subassembly name here in this dialog box. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose none. And then this is an alignment. So again, this time I'm going to select the Madison Lane again, just like I did in the other one, and add this. So now that is my target. And click OK. And then also for the horizontal vertical alignment, select. Now this time I can select the horizontal alignment and then filter. And these are the only two profiles in that horizontal alignment. The vertical profile I want is FGCL and add that and click OK. And then that ties it in. And again, once I'm done, then I can go ahead, just like I did before, edit frequency for this and set these for two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet. And there you go. Last target to set. Almost forgot this one. Surface targets are at the top here. There's my EG surface. And that's a simple, then you could see. So there's 2021. And back to 2022, you can see I get the same results on each one. And that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at mshinesk at siler-ds.com. You can also email us at cadtechnical at silerinst.com. Please don't forget to visit our blog at www.siler-ds.com forward slash blog for more tips, tricks, and news in Autodesk. And I hope this has helped you, and have a great day. Thank you.